Let's do some news. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is October 23rd, 2020. The time is 3.26 p.m. Went to the doctor this morning. He said that my hand is healing fantastic. He says, you can use it now. I've been using it this whole time. So apparently I was not really supposed to. So, <laughs> so yay for that. So that's a physical therapy to go through. But for the most part, I'm like, oh, look, it's almost straight. It's almost, it's almost, ah, it's almost there. So yay, good for that. Yeah, now you can use it. Now you can use your right hand. Ah, 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 jokes. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to cover today. Um, ah, God, what do we start? We're going to start with, uh, let's start with the... Well, let's start with the DMCA thing, because that comes around so often. I feel like we're all basically legal legal experts at this point in time. Uh, some of us are a little complacent with, uh, you know, just willy-nilly playing a copyrighted material on streams. Maybe myself. Uh, automaton covers don't really count. As much as I would like to say, but, but it's a cover. It's a cover. I was you Nah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It goes deeper than that, though, apparently. We'll see. But, um, and now my left hand sucked for a bit. <laughs> Left arm is so strong now. It's so much bigger looking, isn't it? Look at that. Look at <laughs> Noodle arms. Anyways, anyways, uh, DMCA. So, delete all the clips. Yes. So, if you're a VOD watcher, this is the first VOD on the list. Yeah. This is the very first VOD on your list. And I want to say, I am sorry. Um, there's just too much risk with... The way that, as we've seen before, as I've I've been victim of in the past, uh, it just doesn't really matter how how careful you think you are. DMCA will find a way. It will find a way to find to do go through your go through your clips or go through your vods and just dig something up and be like, "Aha! That that we got him. We got him." As happened to me with uh, what a good example. Um, Laura Croft. I was playing Laura Croft Tomb Raider, the uh, remake 2016, 14, whatever it was. Uh, I have a playthrough that's on my YouTube channel, and you'll notice that some of the episodes are missing because the in-game music was struck down. And so I ended up losing entire chunks, entire episodes because of that. That is how fucking flimsy this system is on YouTube. Twitch thinks that they could do better. <laughs> They're using a different system. We'll we'll refer to it as content ID, just just because we're all familiar with the term. Um, but they are they are going to be implementing it, and or they have implemented it, and they're going to continue using it. But the, what they did was they sent an email out that basically said this: from Twitch to literally every streamer, subject DMCA warning. Hi, literally every single one of you have gotten a DMCA claim. We can't provide which VOD clip highlights or broadcast or any form of media that triggered this, good luck, <laughs> which is not far from the truth. Here is the actual email that was received where they say, uh, we were writing to inform you that your channel has, has was subject to one or more of these DMCA takedown notifications and that the content identified has been deleted. We recognize that by deleting this content, we are not giving you the option to file a counter notification or seek a retro uh, retraction from the rights holder. In consideration of this, we have processed these notifications and are issuing you a one-time warning to give you the chance to learn about copyright law, the tools available to manage the content on your channel. <laughs> so, so that's exactly what they did. They're taking the approach of, we're going to inform the partners uh, of how to, how to better 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 manage your media so that way you're not a victim of of a DMCA takedown and uh, potentially losing your uh, account. So, uh, by the way, thank you so much for the for the resubs and the subs. We'll talk. We'll, I'll thank you guys after this. Um, so, so, so DMCA will be the one to take down Twitch, not another streaming platform. Jeez, it's definitely it definitely feels like the more we lean into uh heavily DMCAing and heavily uh regulating and over moderating our own content out of fear of DMCA strikes. Uh I feel like it'll be it'll it'll, it'll kinda um I guess homogenize the the network as a whole. Where like think about YouTube videos. I'm sure that there are YouTube uh videos where you watch and you're like wait a minute I've heard this same exact background music on like 15 other videos totally unrelated to each other, totally different subject, whatever, uh, because they're all pulling from the same 
from the same uh, you know, pool of, of, of audio. And, you know, most of the time with some of the music that they have on YouTube's like, you know, royalty free music stuff that you could use, um, they uh, there's only like a couple that are really good. And so what happens is everybody kind of gra- gravitates towards those single those, those few handfuls of uh, uh, of music and soundtracks and they end up using them. And so you end up hearing them everywhere. So it kind of makes almost it, it kind of makes YouTube feel a little vanilla. Right. There's just not a whole lot of uh, variety there. You watch this video, you get the same song. You get this, uh, so you end up losing some of the character that people would like to put into their their videos. Now, obviously, I have a leg up on some folks because I have my own music. I've also made that music available to all of you guys. So you guys can, uh, if you want to stream my music in the background, make your own playlist. So, you know, take like the heaviest beats and put them in a playlist or make something that's chill or whatever. I got plenty of music to support all that. Uh, you can feel free. You could do it. Uh, my AK might be a playlist. You can find it on Spotify. You can find my music on basically every platform. Um, but that's still, honestly, that's still not a whole lot of music, right? Like you, you, you're gonna have to not just pull from just my own library, which is like five hours of music, maybe, maybe like forty-five minutes of that is stuff that any, any individual person would want to use. Same way that you know YouTube's library, there's only like three songs that everybody ends up using. Uh, so you're gonna have to like source music from all these other creators. Now, Twitch is putting out a system it's not uh, it's in beta right now it's called soundtrack i'm gonna pull this over actually i didn't i didn't put this in the notes here but uh they are pulling together a system called soundtrack that is a as it says here a rights cleared music tool designed for twitch creators uh it's supposed to be a system that work now i haven't messed with it but it's supposed to be a system that works where it doesn't with audio does not uh, show up in the vods um now i don't know how this system works because this is still relatively new and i've not tested it myself um because i have my own music so i could just you know play my own stuff uh, but soundtrack i'm just soundcloud yeah exactly <laughs> uh but they do it looks like they are trying it's like they're, they're trying as quickly as they can to to get something out there for people to use uh you're still going to be le- you stuck with just what they offer you um so again going back to the youtube music collection uh even like monster cat cat i subscribe to monster cat so i could use monster cat music whenever i open up the stream or just during the stream or like right now whatever um but it's still a certain style of music and not everybody's really into that not everybody wants to have that the monster cat style it's basically a genre really <laughs> like monster cat has basically its own genre of music uh when you go through their their collection some people just aren't really feeling that even me like i like that kind of music but sometimes it's just a little bit too much uh uh um let me see music music too loud what is the uh, time we all use my that's right use my music uh rights cleared i believe means rights avoided yeah uh Monster Cat, sorry, I'm a dog person. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's my co-host, everybody. Uh, we all need a little variety. There you go. Try to find trying to find heavy metal industry is a nightmare for streams. I'll tell you why. Because it takes more than one person to make that music most in most cases, right? Not all of us are a cell dweller or a fox gear or something where we could pick up a guitar and like lay all this stuff on top of you know on top of these beats that we also write. Uh, not all of us can do that. So what happens is you get, you know, mostly electronic music that is, you know, uh, made by one or two people. Uh, we can use uh, negative pH music when we stream, Mike. Of course, of course, I've been saying this forever. Yes, yes, you can. The only thing you can't use it for is, um, is for branding. That's the only thing I don't want. I don't want, because I don't want like, I don't want like some political podcast, something like that to be like, oh, I like this tune. I'm going to use it for my intro for my political podcast. And it's just like, no, I don't want that. Like, I don't want, I don't want it to be a fixed part of somebody's branding. That's different. All right. Now, if you want licensing for your intro or something like that, like for your, give you again, your, your, uh, your show intro, whatever we could talk. All right. But that's different. All right. Just background me, just back, like intro to your stream. Totally fine. Right. You have like a, whatever you have, like one of these things going. Sure. Whatever. Right. That's fine. Totally fine. Totally fine. Um, here's a question. Uh, Spotify has a thing called Soundtrack Your Business that is like 36 a month. What if you use that? You could probably use that. I, I, I only imagine that if it's sound, if it's uh, Spotify, it's probably pretty, pretty vanilla. <laughs> it's probably like salon music, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like f- find me artists similar to mm, Coldplay. <laughs> it's probably maybe kind of like that. Uh, but again, though, 
the more sources you have, the more variety you have, and the, the, the easier it is to come up with stuff that you need to use for uh, your various types of uh, media and stuff that you put together. Um, now, uh, I did delete, like I said, I did delete all of my VODs, and I did so, I did so at the last second. I was really not planning on doing it, uh, but... Because I was going to be like, man, no, fuck these guys. I was like, man, fuck them. But then I thought about it. It's like, do I really want to be that dude? Like stripping, right? <laughs> like Sam. Do I want to really be like, be like him and just be like, eh, witness me, he says. <laughs> I guess we will. Um, like who? So uh, you heard licensing for streaming is a pain in the ass. Need to get performance license, stream license, and some other license. Yes, you have a broadcast license probably in there too, uh, because you're broadcasting to a certain number of people, and the more people that you broadcast to, means the more the more ears hear it, which means the more money you have to pay. Uh, typically, like your broadcast license will be like ten thousand listens or views or whatever or plays, uh, and so like you imagine somebody like you know um, I don't know like Shroud or something like that uh, trying to license music, you probably play probably ends up paying a pretty a pretty penny or he maybe just subs to monster for five dollars a month one of those two uh pay per ear <laughs> same sort of things with retail music yeah uh i guess you could find that you could go dig up those old kmart those old kmart uh, uh um background music cassettes that people had backed up on uh i think like well the internet archive or whatever uh, the same ones I used to make basically vaporwave. Uh, you could probably go through there and play those. Those, those might be kind of fun. Just play them straight up. Just straight up the original, like front to back. Don't edit anything. Just play the whole thing. I'm sure the license is well expired. You won't get in trouble. Trust me. I'm a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> no, don't do it. Um, so Mike Shinoda was on Drop Frames this week and talked a lot about music rights. I'm sure Mike Shinoda probably knows a lot about that. <laughs> Being that he's somebody who works in the industry and probably licenses a lot of his music. Um, yeah, I'm sure that that, probably, that might be a good one to watch, actually. You go and check out Shinoda on uh, on Drop Frames and all of them. Um, sure, Mike. You guys don't trust me? Come on. <laughs> Disclaimer from Mike. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what I did was I ended up using this tool and I'll keep uh, someone's probably will probably link it here by but, but uh, I'll keep it in the uh, the notes but this tool made it pretty easy to go through and delete everything so if you're one of those types that just kind of like well I guess I was going to just kiss everything goodbye you could do that using this handy tool uh, so I basically went through and just deleted everything except for stuff I mean like I have like I have a video from 2010 here right so over 10 years ago I have a, a vod that's still up uh, from one of the earliest things that's a highlight actually um and so yeah I kept those I kept my my rbgs I kept all those so there's a few things that I left because there's no music playing and I know there's no music playing but even this is dangerous because it's not just like it's not just music it could be visuals right uh it could be um i mean it, it could just be a game that you would think that you'd be okay to stream like i mean in one of these in the 8-bit show pilot thing here that was something that uh, uh the multiplayer test that was something when josh and i were playing um uh we were playing mario kart uh, super nes we were playing. Uh, we were playing online with a very real jank online system using emulators. Um, so it's very possible that you know Nintendo could come down and pull like a Sega and be like, "Hey, you know what? We're just gonna go strike all these things down, and that could be the end of that." So, but I figured, I figured if I only have what is this? Uh, five, ten, fifteen, eighteen. If I only have eighteen videos from back then, and I need like what, like three strikes to get my account canceled. I'm going to go, I'm going to guess that I don't have three strikes mixed in here anywhere. And then, of course, going forward, I'll try to be more careful on our regular streams. Now, uh, one habit that I got into, as somebody who's been making videos on the internet for a very long time, uh, one habit that I got into, and I've said this before, is uh, is disabling in-game music. And I do that, I do that when I, uh, when I work with videos that I know I'm going to edit because it makes editing a lot easier because you don't have background music that's cutting all over the place when you're trying to edit together multiple clips. Uh, then you can layer the actual background music or your own music, which is what I did for like the BFF report and other shows. Um, and that was a way to get around that. Now I stopped doing that when I went live because it seems really weird to play a lot of these games and not have the fucking background music, right? We were just playing Baldur's Gate, which has amazing background music. I can't imagine not using the background music simply because I'm worried that I'm going to get a copyright strike. Right? Hi, babe. Oh, sure. Why not? I'll drink and drive later. No big deal. 
Thank you. Haircut looks great. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Cheers. Um, so yeah, I've, 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 I used to be pretty well trained, uh, in not playing music for, uh, in my videos. And maybe that's the way we have to go forward, which is fucking stupid, which is fucking stupid. Um, let me see. So uh, obviously there's a lot of like uninformed takes. Uh, it's, it's the internet. I was searching for like what people were saying and I found bullshit like this is like, stop complaining about memories or your content or history when you have to, when you have to delete all of your Twitch VODs because of DMCAs. You have nobody to blame but yourself for using copyrighted material in the first place. Literally every game you fucking stream is copyrighted by someone. Every game, even this, is copyrighted by someone all right <laughs> there is there's just there's just no getting around it this is this there's gonna there has to be a solution going forward that is not dmca right there, that is not you know dmca live takedowns which is something that's coming right we know it's coming uh trying to stream naked there you go it's gonna be just a just a black screen just nothing at all oh god um it's a good compromise to get him deleted over getting a strike. Yeah, exactly. A surprise beverage. Did you work on that? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Just make sure you don't sing or play Happy Birthday as well. It's copyright till 2030. Dang, did they really extend that? That was 20. I thought it was 2016 or something like that where they that ended. The issue related performance right, and that is a problem. That's right. So there's definitely a there's a language issue with what constitutes a um a performance or a broadcast and what constitutes you know just I I. I not, I guess, just just playing something and just people happen to be watching it. Like, for example, if I'm sitting here and we're and, and I'm maybe playing a song in the background or something like that, um, or maybe we're playing a game with this background music or whatever, like you guys are watching me play that, right? Technically, you could watch it for free, right? I can I can earn absolutely nothing off of you guys watching me play a game. Okay? But that could that is definitely a copyright violation the the copyright holders are, are allowing me to do that right it's a video game of course of course but if you were sitting here next to me while we were playing the game i wouldn't have to pay a license for that so there's definitely a language here that needs to be modified about what constitutes a broadcast what what constitutes uh, a breach of somebody's you know copyright because of the type of work that we do uh there has to be something and this is something we've been dealing with forever since since youtube started taking off right I i've been getting copyright strikes since before Declan was born <laughs> okay <laughs> like it's been a long time uh you see um so maybe like how radio stations work they don't uh don't they pay like a, a service or a monthly fee to play music i don't know i don't know exactly how radio stations work i don't even know how they know how many people are listening to the radio honestly um 1998 ain't cutting it for dmca anymore jeez that's right that is, that is when uh when they established that wasn't it uh tech always ahead of the legal language and it will continue to be just like that uh so i have legal filings older than you <laughs> your back hair when you said that yeah sorry people's hips <laughs> We're there a lot of the yeah a lot of the rules were written a very long time ago decades decades ago lots has changed lots has changed um yeah and there's also there's there's violations all over the place that um that could you know one day one day a day of reckoning we it's funny as streamers we feel like days like today because today was the official day if we go back and take a look at this uh today was the official day it's whoops wrong button sorry uh it says that um join the let me see here it is so we will resume the normal processing of dmca takedown notifications received after 12 p 12 noon pst on friday let me check my email to see if i've gotten any uh let me see no 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 okay cool I might be okay. <laughs> I might be okay. I might, I might, have, I might have slipped by this one. Uh, what I have not done is, um, I've not deleted any of my clips because there's no way to like, uh, that tool does not seem to pull up clips. So I've not gone through and filtered through my clips, but 99% of the clips that I have are like regular gameplay stuff. Um, so I don't know if it's worth it to go through and delete them. I'll try to figure out if I can. If anything, what I'll do is I'll probably delete anything under, uh, I think, what Josh said he's doing. Uh, Josh said that he was doing uh, anything under, like, five views, which makes sense because some people make a clip and then nobody watches it. 
and then it's just basically a ticking time bomb of a clip. I mean, you know, really, that's a great way to fuck someone over if you really wanted to. Just wait until they play something that's copyrighted, right? Like some music or something. Oh, play a little jam or whatever. Oh, just... oh, oh, be careful. I don't want to play that too long, right? So cop, just clip that part and just don't share it with anybody. Let it slide under the radar. And one day, in one day, get him. I hate you, Jack. Clipped. <laughs> so, so obviously this is uh, uh, causing uh, a lot of a lot. A lot of people are, are pretty upset about this, as as we typically are, right? Um, whenever we get faced with having to you know, tear take down all of our work, but this is the first time I feel like a lot of people have gone through the lengths of actually deleting lots and lots and lots of work. Like for me, it was only the past ninety days. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why I only had like 90 days worth of vods when like JP has like you know 10 years or whatever. Um, considering I've been on the platform longer than him, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I don't know. Why, I don't know how that works, but it doesn't matter because uh, I still deleted my last 90 days. I did save my Among Us streams in case those ever get edited. Um, you suck mixing only AK mic B tunes. Do top. I mean that's that's another thing too. And every time we talk about DMCA, we always bring up the DJs like Top, like uh, like Jovian, like anybody that does any kind of mashups or DJing or live mixing or whatever. These people are are at risk, at serious risk, uh, especially when. Like I said, when the live takedowns are coming. So Co Carnage, he, you know, we'll go through a couple of people's uh, uh, thoughts on this. But Co Carnage says, uh, he says, yep. I, so first off, the guy says, guys, it isn't just music triggering DMCA. Apparently images, alerts, sound clips, etc. can also do it. So, for example, if you have a clip uh, or if you have a, an alert that, you know, has a sample or something from a movie, you could get nailed for that. Absolutely could get nailed for that. Um, and it says, uh, might as well delete everything since we aren't being told what it is specifically triggering it. Uh, and it's uh, so he says, yep, I removed my uh, toss a coin to your, Richard, your Witcher sound. Uh, you're the best around soundboard and my Cypress Hill soundboard. He had a whole soundboard with Cypress Hill. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and, and a lot of people are going this route where they're just like, let's just delete everything. Pocket says she deleted everything. She says, you know, I didn't think I'd get emotional watching all my VODs, highlights, etc. get deleted. But 10 years of shit deleted. That fucking hurts. Damn. JP, same thing. He says, 99% uh, decided to delete all my VOD slash clips on the channel. 10 years with the videos makes it impossible to search. And without it, I, without a doubt, played a copywritten song or, uh, or I guess, or, or 10 across the years. Uh, it sucks, but it is what it is, I suppose. Going to try to download them all. Uh, and some people are saying, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that, right? And he responds again, and he just says, a lot of folks confused as to why a large majority of us are deleting all clips slash VODs. Having a greater than 0% chance of losing everything you work to build over the years isn't worth keeping a VOD online that very few will ever watch again. It sucks, but losing everything sucks more. And that's something that, you know, when I deleted the VOD, it's like, I could see that people watch the VODs, right? Like, I could see the numbers, and I know that there's there's some folks that do watch VODs. Um, and I deleted them, and I was just like, okay, maybe we'll get lucky, and nobody will notice. And within minutes, within minutes, Sav was already in, was already in Discord like, hey, what happened to the VODs? <laughs> and I felt like an ass. I felt like an ass. But there's nothing we could do. We're just stuck. We're just stuck. We can't do shit. People were like, upload to YouTube. It's like, YouTube's going to be the same thing. I mean, YouTube is going to be more lenient because YouTube has a better system. Never thought I'd say that. YouTube has a better system. Because when they, when, whenever you, whenever you flag something on their system, they just take the ads. They just take the ad money. <laughs> That's what they do, right? They don't. I, I haven't had an issue with them muting chunks of my vods or chunks of my chunks of my audio in years, years. They've just stuck with. We're just going to take the money from that video, and you know what? Fuck it. It's fine. Have my ten cents. Totally fine. Um. You, you watch uh, recent VODs if you missed the mainstream? Yeah, you take that back. <laughs> so you want to watch Among Us again to take notes and was gone. Yeah, you know what? The most recent, what I might do with the most recent uh, Among Us VODs that I downloaded, I might just upload those straight up because I'm not going to wait for those to get edited. Uh, I'll just upload those straight up and you guys could go through them and uh, because there's some great moments in there. And so the, for those of you guys who want to do it, it's very minimal effort for me to upload and unlist those videos to YouTube. I have no problem doing that whatsoever. So I will do that for you guys. I'll do it over the weekend. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll post it in, um, I'll make like an Among Us VOD playlist or something like that. And I'll just post that in, uh, it, it'll be temporary. Well, the video, the videos will just last forever in the playlist, but uh, I'll post the, uh, um, the playlist in Discord for you guys. All right. 
But those are the only ones I downloaded. Like there was, there was like, um, I think it was 87 videos or VODs or so, uh, that I ended up deleting, uh, because I mean, it's just too much. Like my Baldur's Gate stuff gone. Um, the Tony Hawk day, the Tony Hawk, uh, that one was gone, gone because it was flagged too. Right. My to the Tony Hawk, pl uh, when we played Tony Hawk, uh, remaster, it was, it was, uh, flagged for one of the audio, one of the tracks in the fucking soundtrack. I wonder why exactly. Yeah. Do unlisted videos on YouTube get hit less or no difference? Oh, it's just a way to make it so it doesn't um, show up in the public feed. That's all. Um, but no, it'll get it'll get treated just the same. And that's another question that people have had. People, someone hit me up. Uh, Star hit me up on uh, Twitter. She says, uh, if you make them private, I think Lyric also did this too, which is not a workaround, by the way. Uh, if you make it private or sub only, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to skate through without getting nailed for DMCA. The, the system that checks when something is uh, in violation, it does not scrape your public videos. They use an API where they just go through and they just check everything that you have. So that's 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 the deal there. Uh, also, if you uh, feel testy, do what Jim did and use material from different copyright holders and watch them fight over it. That doesn't work anymore. I remember he did that, but that doesn't work anymore. Uh, usually what happens with that is uh, <clears throat> they'll just like flag different parts of the video and they'll have multiple claims underneath your video. But yes, I remember. I remember that was a, that was a while ago, right? Back when they were like muting vods and doing all that shit. I think. <sighs> Speaking of weekend, need spooky sounds. Oh man, I don't fuck it. No, no, wait, wait, we can't. We can't because where are we gonna get the sounds? We can't just use. We gotta go to like freesound.org and, and and farm up a bunch of sounds. We can't just do it. Um, yeah, hey, game Vaughn, I got it. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, it's actually the next story. God, God. Well, <clears throat> just know that. Just know that uh, live takedowns are coming. So it's very possible in the future. And YouTube's had this, by the way. But I've never seen them actually use it. Uh, live takedown. You're a sound artist. It takes two seconds to just make a bunch of spooky sounds. No, it does. It takes so much time. Um, so yeah, live takedowns are coming. And it's going to uh, have a significant impact on everybody that streams. You're going to watch people streaming and then something's going to happen. Maybe they have, uh, maybe they're playing a game that they bought. And it's going to, or maybe even better, a game that the developer gave them to play on their stream. And right in the middle of the feed, it's just going to go offline. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Rip those, yeah. DJ streams. Oh man, that's the one that hurts the most. I I watch. I do. I do watch DJ streams often. Top. I I do lurk. I do lurk in your channel often. I watch Jovian often. Um, you know, I I really do like watching people just DJ live. I just listen to them. It's it's good shit. Uh, and it is painful to think that uh that 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 whole column of just uh, of content creators could just gone just gone tiny's public yeah scour the public domain i guess i guess you could be a monster cat dj <laughs> that's that's an option you can just go be a monster cat dj which will be so easy because it's all the same bpm it's on the same bpm it's all yeah there you go so i look at top's face <laughs> come on top <laughs> You're deleting everything now. You can use you could use real quick before you go delete everything. What I did last night was I used Twitch Leecher, which is an, which is another app, Twitch Space Leecher, L E E C H E R, uh, and I used that to go through and download all the vods that I could uh, that I wanted to keep. Obviously, it was like a hundred gigabytes worth of downloads, uh, but it was still better than just straight up wiping everything. So. <sighs> Another, an, another, another month, another DMCA apocalypse. It feels like it's like all the time. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, uh, <laughs> funny enough, the DMCA apocalypse, DMCA apocalypse, DMCA apocalypse, uh, was almost eclipsed by one man, by one man, Mr. Alex Hutchinson, who uh, who says he is the uh, creative director. For ah, uh, he changed it. 
<laughs> he says he's the creative director uh, for Google Stadia, but he has since updated it to Google to the creative director for SG and E Montreal Studio exclamation part for real for real this is what I mean guys I can't believe he changed it I know that I should have screenshotted it because I had no idea he would do that oh one man that's right so he says related to this streamers worried about getting their content pulled because they used music they didn't pay for should be more worried by the fact that they're streaming games they didn't pay for as well it's all gone as soon as publishers decide to enforce it. And he says, the real truth is <laughs> the streamers should be paying the developers and publishers of the games they stream. They should be buying a license like any real business and paying for the content that they use. I like sloop bags. <laughs> Holy shit, this wasn't a joke. <laughs> oh, man. You have the screenshot? Oh, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, drop it into uh, uh, just just put it in um, uh, in the channel real quick and I'll, I'll pop it up for people to see. Uh, we'll do an A-B comparison. <clears throat> this isn't the first time we talked about this, is it? I didn't, uh, didn't the Firewatch dev say something? I don't. I, I think so. We every once in a while we'll get like, like you said, like like a dev or something that might have maybe like a weird opinion about something, like uh, Bill Fish or something, right? We'll get. Well, every once in a while we have one that's just a little outspoken about the wrong things. Um, but this is this is. I see it right there. Thank you, Crispy. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. Oh, he kept, oh, he kept the uh, exclamation mark. Oh, that's my news stuff. Don't look at my news. Don't look at my news. It was my notes. There it is. So here it is. A creative director at Google Stadia. Okay, so he swapped that out. Swap that out. Thank you for putting that in there. Appreciate it. I'm going to put that in the notes. Y'all look at my notes, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see where I put Alex the bad take machine? <laughs> Because <laughs> he is. Oh, man. No more Randy soundbite. Oh, yeah, that too, actually. Yeah. Uh, bike dropped a good one as well later in the night about developers and uh, and publishers go out of their way to pay the streamers. So that's that's the thing, right? There is this 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 un this unspoken kind of agreement between uh, content creators and the uh, publishers of media, video games, whatever. Uh Publishers of not just video games, media in general. Publishers of media want influencers to push their content. They want it. I get several emails a day from developers who want me to play their game on stream, make a video, right? They don't want me to play it personally. They don't give a shit if I like it. They want they want more people to to see their game. Uh, so there is this unspoken agreement that even though even though uh technically streaming a game is you know you're in most cases you're violating someone's copyright broadcasting the game uh even though there's that we still have this agreement that we're not going to charge you for it right we're not we're not going to come down on you because it's a very bad look and we can really thank social media for this because Whenever, uh, whenever somebody does make a bad move like that, Sega, uh, several others, um, whenever they do stuff like that, whenever they do stuff like that, social media comes down hard. Social media comes down really hard. The whole cancel thing comes out, right? Um, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of people commented on the matter. I, I, I didn't go through and grab everybody's take uh, on it, but I will, I will say that I think that this guy's a fucking, it's <laughs> a terrible take. <laughs> this, is, this is such a bad take. Uh, and also... Feel, I feel like it explains. It's funny because it's like he, when it when we first saw that he was like the creative director at Google Stadia. It's like ah, that's what's that's what's wrong with Google Stadia, huh? Uh, he also has I can't, apparently has a history of bad takes. Uh, he also at one point in time said that, and this could be subjective, of course, but probably not the smartest thing to say. Uh, where you say that, and I'll pull it down here, where he says, uh, then Gears of War comes out, apparently it's the worst written, he says, okay, so then Gears of War comes out, and apparently it's the worst written narrative in a video game ever. Uh, I'll take Gears of War over Bayonetta anytime. So, like, you just got a, you got a history, you don't, you don't really want to just come out and have such a hard stance, be like, yeah, you know, this mainstream game that's on every console is better than you know, a game that is beloved by uh, by folks. Uh, speaking of bad takes on um, on things that people love, uh, he also had something to say about Giant Bomb. He says, uh, "So says speaking of things people don't want to pay for, how's Stadia going?" And he responds and says, "Better than Giant Bomb, from what I can tell." Wow. <laughs> Just, just full, just 
full of pretentiousness. Just so much. He's just brimming. Just, oh. uh, see, I'm a Dirty Gears player with Bayonet over Gears. Get out of here. Yeah, just ridiculous. Like, So Giant Bomb is, I mean, whether or not Giant Bomb is successful right now, right? I don't know. Uh, I know that they still exist. I know they still tweet. I know they still have followers. I know they still have uh, subscribers. Um, but you don't fuck with them. People love Giant Bomb. This part, it's part of video game media history, right? It's like Game Breaker. If Game Breaker actually was successful, <laughs> like you guys, love, you, you guys still have a fondness in your heart for Game Breaker. Now imagine the fucking millions of people who know about Giant Bomb. What an idiot! What a dumbass! Unbelievable. So Jason Schreier did clarify. I didn't see Jason Jason Schreier's take on this whole thing, but Jason Schreier did clarify, saying the funniest thing about today's streaming drama is that everyone thinks Alex Hutchinson runs Google Stadia because his Twitter bios is creative director at Google Stadia. He's actually a creative director at Montreal Game Studio that was purchased by Google last last December. Uh, it says his LinkedIn seems to point. Uh, he's senior creative director at Google Stadia as well. Ah, oh, funny. Does he really? I have no doubt he got his own job title right, but everyone is interpreting it as the creative director of Google Stadia when it's actually a creative director making games for Stadia. Oh man, uh, let's let's not oversell it here. Dang, uh, his his last tweet mentions he's gonna go stream some Fall Guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did, he did. He's like, oh, let's play some Fall Guys, and everyone starts ripping on him in the comments. Uh, Jesse Cox had a take. I didn't go collect everybody's takes, obviously, but uh, Jesse Cox says the real truth here is there is no conflict when a dev team recognizes people enjoying themselves in front of 100, 1,000. 10,000 people uh, are the best press they could ask for. Just like I said, for every streamer killed our sales, there's Fall Guys, Fortnite, etc. Maybe the game was the problem. Maybe the game was the problem. So Jack said I is the best take. I, I, I didn't see. I'm sorry, you mentioned this twice now. Uh, it's better be good. Just link it to me. <laughs> you're on. You're on. You're 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 putting your feet to the fire now, bud. Um. So yeah, it's it's uh it's on my Discord. Oh gosh, on my Discord. Let me see. Where'd you put it? Uh, let me see. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh God, where? Oh, there's so many things. You guys are busy. Let me see. We'll grab that. Not my notes. It says, uh, no, no, no. So I think this is extremely ironic in considering you have a fan art of me, a streamer, as your banner from when I played Savage Planet. Get the fuck out. <gasps> you even cropped out the watermark on the banner. Damn, Vaughn. You did it. <laughs> You did it. That's great. <laughs> that is his banner. Or was. I don't know if it is now, but it, it was his banner. <laughs> it is. It's still there. Give me a break. I, I didn't know. I saw it, but I just assumed it was just some random picture that maybe uh, of him. But I didn't notice that the guy has no fucking hair. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> Oh, very hypocritical. That is so great. There's so much. Okay, I guess you guys got a bunch more here. Let me see. Uh, you want the cash? Okay, thank you. So, Ira, give me the cash version. Um, uh, I saw this one from. Uh, I saw this one from Hillary. <clears throat> she says E3 is about appealing to press. There is a reason they started inviting content creators. A lot of devs consider uh, content creators press now. Uh, reviews, first looks, playthroughs, with embargoes. You know what's funny? You know she says a lot of devs consider content creators press now, which is a little inaccurate. Content uh, devs have considered content creators press for a long fucking time. <laughs> and I know she's just saying it, right? Just, just, she's just saying it. She's not trying to be all actually about it, but, uh, but it's true, right? Like this guy is so out of touch, so out of touch that he doesn't recognize that it's, it's not like this is new. Content creators have been important to uh, game development for almost 10 years. It's fucking crazy. Uh, and she says, even if they didn't pay for the game, it doesn't mean they shouldn't or slash can't stream it. Just, just ridiculous. Um, you can see uh, the top of the signature that he cut off. Oh my God. Can you really? I'm actually going to go back to his thing. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, look at that. Man. Wow, man. Alex Hutchinson. Main character for a day. That's what they're saying. You don't want to be the main. You don't want to be the main character for the day on the internet. You don't want to be that one guy. And that's uh, and that's him. Wow, unbelievable. Let's go look at his his most recent tweets, though. He says, "Yeah, he says anyway, gonna hop online and stream some Fall Guys. Who's up for it?" He says, "I hope you bought that special stream only license to play and stream it." He says, "I love streamers. Look at this ratio: three hundred sixty comments, seventy likes. 
Unbelievable. Let's look. I wonder what his quote tweets say. Quote tweets. You know they lost it when they have to resort to grammar insults, dipshit. <laughs> oh, steamers. Oh, okay. There it is. Oh my god. That's where he went with. I didn't even see it. See, that's that's how much he was digging for. He was looking for something. He was scouring. Stupid. Unbelievable. Cleveland. The Cleveland. The Cleveland streamers. Is that it? <laughs> What a dick. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised. And that was my that was my my take on it was a little more simplistic. Uh for me it was let me see if I can find it here. Uh, na, 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 there it is. Yeah. So for me, it was a little a little simpler because I don't see this guy having a job very much longer. He says Google Stadia's creative director thinks streamers should be paying publishers to stream their games, which alone is a stupid sentence to say, right? Uh, good luck on your future endeavors, Alex. I'm fairly certain that he's not going to last wherever he is. This is this is a super bad look for for a platform that is already hurting. Okay. No. Do any of you guys own a Google Stadia? I know that at least a couple of you guys do. Um, but it's not like if I ask, do any of you guys own a switch or do any of you guys own a, an Xbox one or a, a PS4, right? There's, there's so many other platforms that people have and they have embraced and they, and, and, and this is an extension of basically like those, right? And it's a subscription service like on live. Um, you canceled your founders pre-order long ago. Smart man. Uh, it isn't just game development, it's just advertising in general. The main driving force of TV radio was to give us shit to allow them to pipe ads into our homes. They saw digital uh, taking off, so they started with uh, YouTube, then Twitch. They have millions of dollars worth of ad budgets just to pay streamers to play their games. Absolutely. And we've heard about these deals all, all the time. Uh, people people have absolutely paid. Uh, companies def regularly pay for influencers to do stuff. Regularly. On every platform. Every platform. Uh, online mics and check in Discord, you see? No, I didn't. I missed that. I'm just old. <laughs> I just, I just, you know, remember. <laughs> Already got burned on Ouya. That's true. Yes, I did. So, so do you guys, apparently. Yes, that's right. I did. I did get an Ouya. Now, listen, I did back. I did back the Ouya. I did get the Ouya. So already just getting it. I got it. That's, that's a huge step. Okay. And most people don't get the thing they back. Uh, and more importantly, I sold it for the same amount that I backed. I made my money back. I don't really consider that a loss. Time, maybe, but I got experience. I gained experience. <laughs> I know better now. I had one. Uh, I should have just kept it, though. Honestly, for long term, like, wouldn't it be great just to have an Ouya sitting right here? <laughs> <laughs> or, or like hang it, hang it like uh, hang it off the back of my truck, like balls or whatever. <laughs> the toe pencil, just hang it right there. See, I could have, I could have had it, man. I could have kept it. Damn. <sighs> Look at the Star Citizen people. Oh, that's a tough one. Because Star Citizen backers are very, are very, very um, passionate. All right, so. <clears throat> Oh God! Where's what's next? Oh, this is in the wrong order here. Let me go ahead and move this down. <laughs> so uh, over the uh, uh, over the weekend, I think, right? Um, to twenty years from now, selling classic Ouya super rare. I know. And do I found out that my my G five this thing this this old busted ass keyboard sells for like three hundred bucks on uh, refurbished refurbished i can refurbish this no problem i used to I used to refurbish keyboards and computers all the time uh for uh for a company when i was uh 16 years old um i can refurbish this make it nice and clean make it shiny and sell it for 300 bucks it's crazy people pay stupid money for for things that are out of print or like an ouya i wonder how much an ouya would sell on ebay let's go look real quick you guys mind let's this is let me just go real quick ebay boom okay boom <laughs> Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Ooh, yeah. Console. <laughs> you can get, look at that. Shoes at, shoes at Payless cost more. <laughs> than what you can get these for. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this one, this one, look at this one's not, not a open box. Seventy nine ninety five. open box still, but yeah. Wow. Buy it now, 20 bucks. See, I, I made money off the deal then, technically. I could have held it. I could have held it. I could have had a $20 truck nuts. <laughs> but I decided to cash out early. Hmm. Payless is no more. Oh, is it really? I don't even know. 
I just know as a kid, I used to, that was, that was a deal my mom gave me. She said uh, that she'll give me $20 for shoes. And if I want to, or, or I could buy any pair of shoes I wanted from Payless. Uh, so I used to get like the XJ900s, which is like basically the, the Nikes with the upside down swoosh. Uh, and they didn't last very long. And so that was a deal. She's like, either I go to Payless or she'll give me, uh, I think, $20 towards a pair, whatever pair of shoes I wanted. So that's why I started mowing them lawns. <laughs> Just like I buy some, some Converse and some Pumas. <laughs> Vans. Oh, man. I miss those shoes. Um, very uncomfortable though. Let's see, that has to hurt to see for those that worked on the on the Ouya. Oh yeah, I bet. Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I got jokes I didn't even know. Uh, so over the weekend, <laughs> let's move on. We got more to talk about. Uh, you buy shoes more often than you uh, when you buy at Payless. Oh, well, that's just by design, really. Uh, you bought a pair of shoes at Payless for security that lasted one month. Yeah, they don't last. They don't last at all. Uh, so. The trick is to, when you're buying Payless shoes to buy like 10 pairs. That way it looks like you have a whole bunch of shoes or whatever. And then after about a year, they're all dead. <laughs> so you have to buy all new ones. And then you get fresh. You get fresh shoes for the next year. $200, 10 pairs of shoes. Easy. So easy. Uh, so uh, over the weekend or earlier this week, one of the two, um, AOC, uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez, she played... Uh, her and Ilhan Omar, uh, they're representatives for um, here in the United States. They played Among Us uh, in an effort to, of course, promote people, you know, to go and vote. And they played it with. I have a list here. Uh, some of, I think some people maybe like swapped out or something like that. I didn't watch the entire vote. I watched the first couple of. I watched the first couple of matches, and then I watched, uh, which I wish I would say for the third, because I heard the third one got really good. Uh, and then. Among who? Us. Uh, and then uh, I caught the highlights after. But uh, it was uh, AOC, uh, Ilhan Omar, uh, Pokemon, uh, Hassan, Disguised Toast, Jacksepticeye, uh, Dr. Lupo, Corpse, Critical. I know there's a couple that I'm missing from this list. There was more people that were tagged. Uh, but I think that's, for the most part, almost everyone. Uh, and <clears throat> it was a, a lot better than I thought it would be. <laughs> Uh, when, 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 uh, when I, when I signed off that stream that day, I was like, yeah, you know, I might watch it. And I ended up, you know, watching the first little bit. Cause I was just like, eh, it's probably going to be just kind of corny. They're going to go around and play. Uh, but no, it was pretty amusing. It was pretty fucking amusing. And also like technically like her stream was pretty dope <laughs> for like a first timer. Uh, and, and clearly she was the one setting up a lot of it because some of that stuff wasn't fixed at the beginning. She had to go through an update and go fix a bunch of things. Yeah. Her stream was pretty good. Um, so AOC, when well, you know, her first time playing, so of course, what happens when you're the first chat? What happens when it's your first time playing Among Us? What is what is the one thing that happens to everyone first time playing? What is it? I'll take a drink while I wait. Ah, that's right. Your pasta. That's right. Demi kills first. Yes, right. Fuck it. <laughs> first round imposter. That's right. She was, uh, so AOC was indeed the first imposter, <clears throat> her, sorry, her first game, she was the imposter. She even, uh, she even made the mistake of, uh, killing somebody and then, uh, uh, and then accidentally reporting while she was trying to vent, <laughs> which many of us have. Uh, and, uh, and then, and then also let me go ahead and actually pull this up. This is from, oh, it's not from, uh, I thought it was from AOC's view. This is from uh, Pokey's view here. Uh, she also <clears throat> ran into uh, Pokey and she said, and I'll preface this. She said, Oh, I can't kill Pokey. She's so nice. Ma'am. Ma'am. Are you safe, ma'am? Yo, can we do the thing? <laughs> it was an honor. <laughs> Ma'am, ma are you safe? Ma'am, are you safe? Just fangirling. <laughs> Just fangirling all over and then gets fucking stabbed. That's what happens when you play. All right? That's what happens. Right, Timmy? Oh, yeah, Demi and I were buddies. Hey, buddy, you want to you wanna go and organize how we're going to do the rest of our tasks today? Sure. Grr every time man can't trust anybody <laughs> oh there's there's a lot of really really fantastic clips um from this because you know who doesn't first off among us clips are typically pretty good anyways uh and also it's like this is a politician in the united states right like that's 
that's a pretty big deal. But you'd be sure Biden made a uh, uh, an Animal Crossing island, but who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> who gives a shit right like this is this game is hot now so having a politician play that and play it well uh which so here's what i heard happen animal who i know this is the funny the most played game at the beginning of the pandemic uh so at the beginning um an intern yes yeah thank you an intern made it for oh of course of course i don't think biden's sitting there <laughs> no way uh <laughs> but apparently um so in the second game, I remember AOC saying that she thinks because nobody's dying, she thinks it might be Omar because because she's too nice, right? Maybe because she's new and she's too nice, blah, 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 right? And then I guess the next game, she was the imposter and ended up just slicing and dicing like, like four or five people or something, just murdering folks. And then she switched it up. Apparently Omar was like the best one. She's like switching it up. No one can figure it out fucking great man um so now the numbers now the number it went straight uh straight up full kruger she went hard she was a killer <laughs> that's like when i tuned out everybody was like oh man you see omar i was like oh no i didn't see it <laughs> uh, omar is getting double kills oh god <laughs> Uh, where'd you get that baller shirt? I'll have to look it up because I bought a bunch of shirts at once and I have no idea where I bought this one. Um, but I will look it up. I will look it up for you. Uh, that's what happens when 90% of your job is talking and debating. Yeah, you know what? Like, there, there is a lot of that too. There's a lot. It's like when your job is to, you know, basically debate or be to be witty, basically. Um, that, yeah, obviously that comes into play here. I'll, I want to go back and actually watch a lot more of the VOD, more than I watched, uh, because I feel like it might be kind of an interesting insight to somebody who has that kind of job, who's playing this kind of game, because how often does that happen? Um, I was high, so I ended up watch multiple, <laughs> watching the whole stream for multiple streams open at once. <laughs> Just oh, so many. Um, <clears throat> so the numbers. Yep, there you go. Uh, so AOC's debut stream has now peaked at 439,000 viewers, making it the third highest individual stream by viewership in Twitch history. Only behind the Ninja slash Drake collab, which is 628,000. I thought it was more than that. Uh, and Shroud's return of 500,000. Uh, meaning that, uh, yes, she did beat out uh, Dr. Disrespect. So Dr. Disrespect is now in uh, fourth place to AOC. Uh, new rule, if Mike can't tell us where he got the shirt, he can't wear it on stream. Well, shit, just gotta go down. <laughs> There's a moment Omar left her uh, hot mic and she was laughing so hard when she killed somebody. <laughs> that happened to us? That happened to us like the other day or whatever. Uh, somebody got stabbed like, oh, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but yeah, so AOC, she got fast-tracked to partner, of course. Uh, she, um, her stream, her stream quality was great. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, people, uh, people enjoy the show. There was a couple moments. I'll show you some of these. Uh, there is, uh, there is this moment here where AOC oh, yeah. hears, uh, corpse, corp, corpse, husband, corpse's voice for the, uh, and comments on it. We're going to play this. Same bunny. Wait, where are you at? Uh, I'm at I laptop. can't it's not get over on scanner. It's been dead for a while. So I've been like running around. This dude's voice oh, is so I thought so I hit well. report. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so corpse almost almost as if he sensed almost as if he sensed the attention had his own response uh, aoc i didn't what i didn't call it uh, uh how's your day my day's going great <laughs> i'm having so I'm much fun anyway i found the body near it <laughs> Uh, later corpse I, I love follow this bullshit it's so dumb later corpse tweets out and he says uh <clears throat> if aoc followed me back i would simply dm her funky monkey friday and it's just a little wave and of course this opens up the floodgates of just all of these just here he goes says we see your admittance to the funky monkey kingdom your welcome ceremony begins this friday at 12 a.m and it's just it's just so much fan oh lord she doesn't know what she started look at this what the fuck even <laughs> so yes a aoc i went to check this is curious so this is curious as aoc did actually follow uh corpse husband right here this is a list of follows here so she did follow a uh, corpse husband and everybody else that was there everybody else dr lupo's there too and so yeah she followed ever critical uh but you know especially corpse <sighs> what a voice what a voice god it just sounds like like giant chains just dragging through hell just 
<laughs> That's what it's just gravel. Just gravel. It's crazy. So at the end, um, <laughs> Doom guy. Yeah, it's yeah. It is. It do, it does sound like the voice from Doom. Hold on a second. Where is that? I can't play it. Never mind. Jeez. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, sounds like rug burns on your knees. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, AOC, she says thank you, everybody, for coming out and play. Um, and uh, apparently XQC was not invited. And he's not at all bitter. He says, thank you so much for playing with us, especially especially for the invite. It was a blast. And I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Heart, good luck with future endeavors. <laughs> Just salt. Just salt. So mad. Uh, but there apparently were a lot of people that I guess were invited, but also not invited at the last second. I don't know how that actually works, but uh, I don't know who set that up or who who was invited, who wasn't. But I guess Train also was invited, Trainwreck. But uh, uh, you hate him so much. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen clips of XQC play Among Us, and he doesn't seem like somebody that's fun to play with. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, if I look at our group that we have that plays, right, which is a rotating group of some folks, um, when I look at our group, I, 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 feel, I feel thankful that we don't have an XQC-like person in our group. Just ridiculous. Uh, what is this? First death uh, by, the, by the person she joined on stream before. What is this? Let me see. This is another clip. We'll watch this, and then we're gonna get, we'll go into the next story here. Oh, let me see. AOC. <clears throat> what is this? This is the... Okay, no, this is... Okay, there's a lot of videos here, so we're going to skip this, but thank you. I'll, I'll include this. Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> uh, Bernie Sanders. The people who are Bernie uh, Twitter uh, tweeted that out. Um, anyways, it's just a handful of videos in this clip here, or in this here, where he passes 300,000. Anyways, so... <clears throat> AOC Among Us stream, who got snubbed? No, I'm just a nerd and an easy, an easy liar. Jeez, yeah, it was, it was. We have some good folks. We have some good folks. I definitely enjoy playing with the uh, with our community. Um, and I'm not. That's not just lip service. Otherwise, I just wouldn't play the damn game. So, moving on. Kind of speaking of Among Us. <laughs> Among Us is. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Gotta get it. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Took me a second to grab that video and get it up here. Um, Among Us, for those of you guys who have a VR headset, it's coming to VR. It, via VR chat! Let's watch this for a second. Isn't this great? This is so good. So yeah, this is VR chat. Oh my God, the vents. I didn't even notice that the first time around. Oh, that's amazing. Um, card swipe. Oh, they got it. Look at, they got it right too. So VR chat, if you don't know, it's basically a bunch of custom rooms that people can make and there's rooms for basically anything. Name your favorite anime and there's there's a room featuring your favorite anime or you could go and dress up in your favorite waifu skin and go look in the mirror and do all kinds of goofy stuff. You could do that. Uh, it was an imposter. So it is. So this is just another room that you can pull up, and anybody. This is not like a mod you download. You could just go and pull it up and just start playing the game. Uh, just start playing. Enter the room. Create a new room, uh, themed uh, in Among Us style, and then play it. You can also join other ongoing games. Apparently, there were a lot of. Uh, there are a lot of uh, people playing it right now, and for the most part, people. I, I checked the comments and replies and the feedback, and it seems that just about everybody's pretty happy with it. They say that the scale is a little off. They say that the scale uh, feels a little bit too tight. Like you walk like two steps and you're in like the next, you know, the, now you're at the next task, the next task, whatever. Uh, but, uh, but still, I mean, you know, VR among us sounds awesome. It sounds great. Can you be a furry? I, I guess, I guess you could. I, I don't know if it actually assigns you the suits automatically. Like maybe at the beginning when you're in the, uh, when you're in the, the loading dock or whatever. Maybe there's a bunch of suits you could go and pick your color or something, which would kind of make sense. That that to me feels like what VR Chat would do because VR Chat operates like that, where they'll have like a bunch of uh, suits up and you can just go click on one and you'll change it in that suit. Uh, you saw someone play it earlier. You could pick whatever. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <clears throat> can't wait for people to play that instead. Have uh, Kratos using uh, to me while Kirby is the imposter. That would be great, actually. Yeah, just to have a bunch of uh, 
uh, random characters. Oh, I think it was Kirby, or I think it was, you know, DDD, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I haven't seen anybody play this game, but, uh, boy, if anything makes me want to go and hook up the damn VR stuff again, like, just hook down, uh, it's that. Uh, they played it as uh, a Mars Attack Alien. So there you go. Play as a skin no one can see. You could do that. Uh, play as Darnell. Hey, that's kind of a cool idea. So, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, let me see. What's, what should we go next? No, 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 no. Ah, here we go. Moving on to cal calmer news. Well, calm. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Actually, there's something I forgot. There's something I forgot. This is actually pretty funny. So, uh, we, we, we've talked about almost more than we've talked about DMCA. <laughs> We're, we've talked about electronic arts and loot boxes prob probably more than we've talked about uh, uh, lo uh, uh, DMCAs. So, calmer. No, 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 no. This, this one's actually kind of funny. Anyway, anyways. So, <clears throat> Class action lawsuit filed against EA in Canada over loot boxes. So a class action lawsuit now in Canada for loot boxes. This is like, okay, another one. <laughs> another one. Yay. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise mechanics. Yeah. Finally, Blood Chill says. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, to me, it just feels like, hey, it's another one. But you know what? Like, eventually, they're going to lose one. Eventually, they're going to lose or two, and they're going to have to pay a lot of money. And in this case, uh, in this case, it says that if they lose, they could potentially have to pay back all of the earnings that they uh, uh, that they made dating back to 2008. So in the article, it's quoted as they had to pay back a lot. <laughs> they may have to pay back a lot. So that's uh, that's a lot of money over a lot of time now it would probably be uh, just so you know it's probably be money they earned through in canada it wouldn't be like global earnings or anything like that but it but if they lose this that could set the stage for them losing elsewhere now i don't have faith that something like that would ever happen <laughs> I, I don't think it's gonna happen uh but it's nice. It's nice to dream. It's nice to dream. Now, what's what's even funnier to me is how this reporter found out. He apparently has a friend who likes to follow this blog that's called Who's Getting Sued, and it's a daily blog listing people who's getting who are getting sued. So, who's getting sued? October nineteenth, twenty twenty. Let's go ahead and search for electronic arts. Oh, oh, read more. Sorry, read more. Okay, now let's search for electronic arts. There it is, right there. So right there, Electronic Arts Incorporated. <laughs> uh, plaintiffs is a class action for damages for unjust enrichment arising from the defendant's operation of an illegal gambling system through the sale of so-called loot boxes in popular video games. So, <laughs> first of all, I didn't know that there was a list like this, but I guess this guy would just saw it. He's like, hey, I have a friend who works in video games. I'm going to forward it to him. And that's how, that's if you see an article anywhere else, it is because of this one guy who follows this one blog who caught this, caught this early. Hilarious. Uh, <clears throat> Trump should be, it's, I don't think this is, this is, this is like a, I don't know actually what this list is, actually. Is this a, a see, specific to a country? Let me see. No, it's just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Canada. This is Canada. So uh, I don't think Trump's getting sued in Canada. But then again, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, could be. Maybe not on the 19th, though. Anyways, so just another, just another loot boxes gambling story. You know, we'll add that to the pile. Add that to the list. Jeez. <clears throat> so Sega. Speaking of Sega, we talked about Sega earlier. If EA loses the case, they could take back uh, all the cosmetics that people buy. That's a great question. That, you know what? That's a great question. And also, that would be massively fucked up if they did that. So I don't think they'll do that. Like, it's one thing for them to lose tons of money. It's another thing for them to lose lots and lots of goodwill. Right? Like, to go through and take... Because not every, this is a class action lawsuit. All right? So they're going to have to pay... If they lose, and if they lose big, and they have to pay back everything uh, dating back to 2008... That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to refund all the cards that were used to make the purchases. It doesn't necessarily mean that. That could just mean they have to pay into a pot that gets divvied out to everybody who is part of the class action lawsuits. Because that's typically how it works. You get 100,000 people to sign up for a class action lawsuit. Or if you're somebody who's, if you're a lawyer and you're trying to, you know, get a, law, a class action lawsuit going, you reach out to everybody who ever purchased something. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody here has gotten a, something in the mail where it's like, there's a class action lawsuit on uh, people who own the 2013 
Jetta or something, right? Like there's always something that that's floating around or, or, uh, or a convection oven or something. There's always something out there uh, that people are trying to get uh, class action lawsuits going for. And you'd end up getting like top set, like 10 cents. You'd be like nothing. Uh, airbags. That's a good one. Lithium ion batteries. Oh yeah. There you go. Yes, exactly. So, <clears throat> so moving on Texas, uh, Texas, what? Uh, Sega, I got Sega and talks mixed up together. Mixed Texas. Uh, so Sega talks about, uh, the future mini consoles after game gear micro. So, um, first off, I didn't know there was a game gear micro, uh, second in here, deep in here. No, 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 no. It says, I think for the next one, we may go with a concept close to the Mega Drive Mini. If I have to say some names, it could be an SG-1000 Mini or a Dreamcast Mini. <gasps> now, this might be just me. I don't know how many people out there you guys are watching that are, you know, fans of the Dreamcast. But the Dreamcast is like my favorite console. Just like, seriously, it was just... The perfect mix of like of everything it was just so good it was just so good i loved my dreamcast i also loved my 256 cd binder that had a whole bunch of rip games in it that i definitely paid for uh but <laughs> i love the dreamcast games they're so good uh i i put so many hours into soul caliber uh of course uh, and I don't even, God, I can't remember all the other games because switch through so many of them, but yes, definitely my favorite. So dude, in my barracks, I had a Dreamcast and it was the bomb. That's right. That was, um, we're <clears throat> outside of statute limitations, right? So there was a guy, <laughs> there was a guy in my barracks who was like in charge of, uh, uh, of downloading and making copies of Dreamcast games, uh, which led to the sale of a lot of Dreamcasts. Let me tell you, almost every one of the barracks had a Dreamcast. Uh, also, every one of the barracks had a whole lot of games for it. And it was, it was just a thing that everybody did. It feels like if you, if you were, uh, if you were in your twenties or a teenager in the early two thousands, you probably had a burned Dreamcast game. Or, or you had the little, the little dongle that hooked up to your back of your PlayStation that let you play burned games, right? Right? I know you did. I know you did. Busted. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of old game consoles. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, see, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <clears throat> this one's kind of weird. <laughs> Whistles. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Atari has come up with uh, what they had like the they had the Atari Mini or whatever, uh, or they're re-releasing the Atari Twenty Six Hundred and. Like they they have all these the Atari hats with the Atari hats with the speakers and all that stuff. They had all this crazy stuff, and yes, they're now looking at building a hotel in Las Vegas. So obviously, I follow a bunch of Las Vegas blogs, um, <clears throat> and this one popped up, and I could not believe this. Uh, it is a very real uh, thing that could happen. Uh, I mean, stylistically. It looks like it looks pretty cool. It looks like the Rio to me, but uh, but you know the Rio really is no more. So you know, uh, I think it looks pretty fucking cool. <laughs> why? Why? L okay, Laren's on. Why is there a pirate themed uh, casino? Why is there a New York themed casino in the middle of Las Vegas? Why is there a Paris themed casino in the middle of Las Vegas? Vegas thrives on just having the most ridiculously themed uh, uh um casinos casino resorts just to just to be different did you know did you know that there was supposed to be a titanic themed casino that never got approved but it was it, but the but the rent just like this just like this the renders and all that stuff were out a titanic themed casino that was supposed to be built the luxor that's like why are the pyramids in the middle of the las vegas strip why is there a mini eiffel tower in the middle of the las vegas strip <laughs> probably would have sank actually <laughs> that, that's the thing if it got built that would have been the joke right uh but it was fun running around there drunk as fuck with those shoes on where on oh, vegas just in general yeah um <clears throat> titanic themed casino don't think that would it would flow <laughs> They would have been just cursed with that. So, yeah, there is going to be... They are in talks to... They have a press release here um, where they are talking about uh, GSD Group partners with global design firm Gensler to unveil new Atari hotels design inspired by the history and future of gaming. I think it's pretty dope. I mean, first of all, the Luxor has basically become like an esports um, 
like the center of esports in Las Vegas. There's a couple other uh, casinos that are Luxor is the pyramid one, by the way. Um, there are a couple other casinos who are also starting to get involved uh, because they see the value. There's money, right? You could gamble, you could bet on whatever. Uh, and so, of course, why, why not just have an entirely gaming themed casino? And so, yeah, this is something they're talking about on the 14th. They were talking about uh, they are going to they're submitting this for um, I guess they're going to see if they can get investors and then move on from there. <laughs> NCC 1701A to the enterprise, get the enterprise up there. I, actually, they do have um, they have a Star Trek themed uh experience i think also in the luxor actually uh but i think that's about it though there's nothing they should have something they should have something that star trek related uh <clears throat> star trek saga how starship blah, 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 blah. what's that layer inside what's that let me see no 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 this is uh the star trek oh <laughs> the star trek saga how the starship enterprise almost landed in las vegas the creative plan to build a 150 million dollar life-size recreation of the enterprise in downtown las vegas tells how the project collapsed amid bitterness and recriminations i, I will tell you though there's there's a lot there are a lot of casinos that get into the planning stage like this like i said there was the uh there was the um titanic uh there's a lot of casinos that get to this stage whether they have a rendering or they have a drawing or whatever and they get into the investor stage and start pulling money and that's what that's when shit basically falls apart uh is in the investor stage can't get enough people to invest or somebody wants a bigger stake in the company or whatever whatever and it ends up falling the fuck apart um <clears throat> Uh, oh, the CEO of Paramount changed his mind randomly and killed it. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, the money was secured. See, there's always, there's so many, it's it's building a casino. It, it's not like just building a regular hotel. You know, it's not like just building a regular, you know, just a regular motel or building or office building, whatever. Yes, you have all the normal stuff that you need in order to, to secure, in order to actually build the building itself. But then there's all the other regulations and all the other investors. And then there's all the other licenses and all the other stuff that comes that comes with it. And so they have to look at this from the perspective of, can we be profitable on this? Is it gimmicky enough to be profitable? Uh, what's a gimmicky? Um, you know what? The MGM used to have a... So the MGM Grand Hotel Casino in Las Vegas was... Um, we used to have a lion's head at the on the front of the uh, uh on the on the corner of Tropicana and Las Vegas Boulevard. You've probably seen it. Actually, I'll go and pull up right now. Uh let me see. Uh, MGM Resort uh Lions Head before after. They had a Lions Head before and let me see. Mm, here we go. Pinterest. Oh, great. Fuck. Pinterest. Hold on a second. Now they email me. Hey, we see you sign up for Pinterest. You want to go ahead? <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, so it used to look like this, right? But what they found out was apparently in cer certain cultures, they uh, <laughs> it's bad luck to walk into a lion's mouth. Now you can see it's not the lion's mouth, but apparently it's bad luck to walk into a lion's mouth. Um, which I feel like it would be like every culture would feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would be the case. Uh, but they ended up changing it from this because people, there are certain cultures, they just wouldn't walk through the front doors. Uh, and they ended up going to another casino, I guess. Uh, let me show you what it looks like now. Let me see if I can find the now. Uh, uh, from the Wikipedia, actually. Let me see, is there a bigger picture of that? Nope. Let me see. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's going to be hard, hard to find a damn picture of this, apparently. Mm, there it is. So this is what it looks like now. So before... After, I mean, you, you could say that, you know, the, the new one looks better for sure, but they wanted to mirror the, you know, the MGM, really, you see every time MGM, like, you know, movies, whatever, like you see the lion, that's what they wanted. Uh, and they ended up putting this guy. Yeah. Ripped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just ripped. Uh, super lion. Just bankrupt the casino. Use it as tax liability going forward. Is this Canadian Tire Hotel? I uh, have Howard Scott Warshaw on the front desk just to tell every guest ET was not my fault as everyone walks in. <laughs> I'm sure that they will bring a lot of those folks in because they're still around. We've seen all of the documentaries and docu series that uh, that bring these folks up to talk about it, especially him. I swear to God, he's in every single like video game history docu series. He's in all of them to defend to defend himself or just give and be like, yeah, I'm the guy who made ET. <laughs> but the story behind that is pretty good. Uh, so anyways, yeah, there's a lot. There's Vegas goes through so many changes. Uh, and some of them happen 
Some of them happen after after investments are already in play. Uh, some of them happen after the buildings are already built. <laughs> like changes have to happen. Oh, this thing's not working. Tear the whole thing down and start over. It's crazy. Original look like the storm and lion. Wow, it does actually. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Atari. Atari Hotel Casino. I would not be surprised if that is something that actually comes to fruition. It really depends on Atari. And I feel like Atari's got a lot of misses lately. With I mean, I don't know how many. Do any of you guys own the Atari speaker, Bluetooth speaker hats? I almost bought one, but I almost bought some Soldier Boy stuff too. So I don't know. But I, I don't really see them really uh, making any home runs lately. So maybe this is something that they could look at as, uh, as a need. Uh, and they try to follow through this as much as they can. So, <clears throat> speaking of video games, ah, oh, it's too easy. Uh, speaking of video games, Tom Holland is going to be playing Nathan Drake from Ar Uncharted in a live, in a live action movie. Uh, this is the only thing we really got from it. Uh, it was a picture of Tom Tom Holland looking like Tom Holland, <laughs> just just looking like himself. <laughs> uh, people are. Um, are odd casting you know what so people people are upset because nathan fillion wasn't chosen i personally feel like nathan fillion may be a little bit too old for the role right now um and getting somebody that is as much as we all love and respect nathan of course uh still it wasn't nathan fillion re i know exactly tom holland is is the new hotness Tom Holland is somebody that a lot that this is just people just like. He's just the most likable guy. Uh, so putting him in a role like this, this is this is perfect. He does look a bit too young. He does look pretty young. He does have kind of a baby face. Uh, it looks like they try to like dirty him up a little bit, like add a little bags right there. Um, but you know what? Like if 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 we end up getting Uncharted one, Uncharted two, Uncharted three, then you know maybe he'll age with it. This could be a uh, this could be a prequel or something. Um, Turning to, uh, uh, to to our takes. Speaking of takes from the internet here, uh, we got we got our boy Alex. Alex says Alex Hutchinson says these shots of Tom Holland cosplaying as Nathan Drake feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for news. We're done. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you for tuning in. Good take. Good take. Is it a good take? I don't know. It, do, it, it, it does look it does look kind of plain. I don't know. Uh, the guy from those comedy zombie movies would have been better. Uh, well, he's, he's also a bit on the older side. Uh, so you heard about uh, multiple Spider-Mans? I have heard about multiple Spider-Mans. Yeah, the multiverse. They're bring all the old Spider-Mans back. Um, and like Tobey Maguire and the other one. I forget the other one. But uh, Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland, and the other one. Uh, they're bringing it back to establish a multiverse, which uh, I think is great. I think they, they saw that the, um, the, uh, the, the animated movie did so well and people like the idea i guess of the multiverse thing um something i'm not familiar with i don't read the comics i didn't even know it was a multiverse uh and i guess that's the direction i'm gonna go with it so we have a spider off be pretty awesome i think though tony why is the director for it oh shit i didn't know that interesting huh where are we gonna go for stream now i'm gonna get dmc if it's i know you can't stream anything just a face cam it's all you get guys thank you so much for hanging out my name is Mike B.A.K. Phony. This is the news. These are my hosts, plural, all of them. Thank you guys for being here and helping me host today. That's it.